those um, other agents in the room that are newer, um, I, I definitely fall in that category. Um, I got my license uh, November 1st of last year, uh, so I'm still very much a rookie and, and feel it from time to time. Um, uh, before, before, uh, before being a real estate agent, I uh, had an online marketing company uh, for about seven years. And then prior to that, I was a, a title insurance rep uh, for First American. Um, I born and raised here in Ventura. Uh, went to school uh, at Stanford University. Uh, graduated with a degree in communications. Played football, believe it or not. <laughs> um, and uh, being at Stanford in the late 90s was a, was a really interesting time to be there because it's really where some of the advent of this social technology we're going to be talking about today was really beginning. Um, I had people in my in my dorm room dorm that was that were driving Lamborghinis and stuff. It was a pretty pretty wild time. And then when I graduated in 2000, I was watching all of the Lamborghinis get towed away. <laughs> so it was you know it was a very interesting uh, very interesting time to say the least. So um, to have the opportunity to uh, to to work in the marketing industry, especially online, and a lot of you probably feel this is that it's a constantly evolving landscape. That's one of the challenges that us as you know real estate people have is is the uh, is to try to keep up. So what I know Jason and I are kind of our goal today is to hopefully break things down in as as simple uh, of a fashion as possible. So I, for for me, it all starts with your website and. If those of you uh, out there that already have a website for their business, I know a lot of you use the Keller Williams provided website, which is a great start. Uh, personally, I feel that it makes sense to have uh, your own website managed separately that you have ultimate access to, um, especially when you're considering using your website as a marketing piece. Um, I have a couple websites that I run right now, I have sambenner.com, which is my uh, personal site. And then I recently partnered up with uh, Jeff Roundy uh, from our office, and we created a brand, um, VenturaBeachProperties.com. Can you pull that one up real quick? Mm -hmm. Just so everybody can. So I'm a, I'm a big branding person, too. Um, I do a lot of the um, graphic design and stuff as well. So I'm a just a real firm believer that because there are so many of us out here in the world of real estate, we have to find a way to, um, to stand out. So what, um, what we did here uh, specifically is to create a website that's generated around a farm that's focused on a farm. So for those of you that market, them, market yourselves to a neighborhood, I think it's a great concept to create a website for that community that you serve and become an informational resource for people that are looking to live in the area mm -hmm. and definitely you're going to establish relationships with people within that community because you have the website to support it. A lot of the homeowners associations out there in the different neighborhoods that you might farm don't have the capability probably or the manpower to be able to create a website for, for that neighborhood neighborhood or that community. So why not take this chance and, and set one up for the area that you farm and become that area resource? Of course the you know of course the, the information is key, but it, it establishes you as an expert in that community. So many websites that I did real estate agent when I had my marketing company were area focused websites and, and people were very successful with them from Village of the Park and all these different areas that just did not have a web presence for it. So for those of you that are thinking about or have been marketing to a specific farm, setting up a website that's geared towards not you, but geared towards the community, it to me it's a it's a softer opening to, to open that door to build a relationship with people in the in the community versus you just beating your chest around the neighborhood saying, Look at me, look at me, I'm so bitching. I think this is really to me a softer but more consistent approach to how you can really build yourself up in the community. And, and Jeff and I have some serious competition in the Ventura Beach. There's a lot of agents that have been there a long time and are very well established. So it's going to, you know, but slowly but surely we're starting to get the feedback that people are 
really appreciating that we're taking the time to put this information um, up there. Um, now, the best part is, is that this is these are what these are platforms that that I have complete control over. And I would recommend number one to make sure that even though I have a web development background, I am not a coder. I don't know how to code from scratch. You know, I use platforms like WordPress is one that I really like a lot. And I can go in here and I can change and I can edit and I can add information just like I would change a Word document and, and be able to create from there. We just had our last one sold, so oh, bummer. That's why I always keep that off my list. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I don't want you to see a phone. No. <laughs> We're hopefully taking one more this weekend. Um, but, uh, you know, just to try to give people a good, a good overview about what we do, but then also really focus it on the community. Now, this, this is a landing page. This is where we want people to land. When we hand a business card, when we put out our postcards, when we do traditional marketing, we want to send them here because this is where we can capture them. And, and it's completely focused and completely niched. All the information is specific to them, and, and people really appreciate that. Um, the, our first audience definitely is people within the neighborhood. Our next audience is Google. That's who we're talking to at this website. So when people are starting to search for Ventura Beach Homes, Ventura Beach Homes for Sale, Ventura Keys, Pierpont Beach, you know, all of those types of search phrases, we're, we're getting traffic coming from Google going to these pages because we have a Ventura Keys page, we have a Pierpont Beach page, and we're adding, we're putting new content into the website regularly, which Google really appreciates. Um, and that's, that to me is really where the secret sauce is, is the consistent adding of content to your site. That's going to be the most, most important thing to do. Because what happens is you just put up your website and leave it alone. It's... It's kind of like the same thing if you walk down Main Street and you saw, you know, someone that still had Valentine's Day decorations in their window. You'd be a little concerned about that store. You know, like maybe maybe they're having a hard time, you know? So go, your visitors and stuff see it the same way. If people have gone to your website and you haven't touched it in a year since February 14th, it's, it's time. You know, people, not only Google, but your site visitors are going to draw that same um, impression that... I don't even know if they're in business. And the social media component is going to feed into that as well. So starting to think about how people search for the specific areas that you serve, you want to make sure that you have content on your website that's going to help people find you. Um, and not all of us are writers. I get it. You know, it's not something that comes easy to all of us. But I schedule it like an appointment. So once a week, I say from this time to this time, I'm going to write an article that's going to go to these websites. And I just, I have to do it. And when you, when you get a call from your website that says, I searched on Google and I found you and I want to work with you, then all of a sudden you're like, man, maybe I should write two articles a week. <laughs> you know? Because that, that money spends really well. And then you start to realize that writing is not that big of a deal because this is really what's happening. This is how you carve out your niche in the market. And a lot of these established agents that have been around for a long time that are just kind of sitting back and watching the show, you're going to be stealing deals out from under them all day long because they're not doing this. Um, so I think that's my first thoughts. Mr. Jason Walters, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, my name is Jason Walters. I've been a realtor for 10 years. Um, originally from Northern California. I came out here about five years ago. I went to school to become a – went to Silicon Valley College in Fremont, California to, be, to study computer graphics and web design. Graduated with a 4.0. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, it was all computers, though. You know, homework is like go home and make a flyer. You know, I'm staying up till two in the morning, redoing it like five times. <laughs> Very cool. Then uh, from there, I went to. I wanted to go to more towards the internet instead of print marketing. Uh, so I went to the Academy of Art in San Francisco to take uh, web design. 
which was really expensive. And as he mentioned, the Lamborghinis were getting towed. You know, the dot com <laughs> crash. There was like a hundred thousand unemployed web designers in the city of San Francisco alone. So I kind of steered away from doing web design as a career. Uh, I I, got, I was end up I was actually always in sales, but I started working with my hands when I got a car. I was like, I want to install stereos, so I got a stereo job for a while. But from there, I uh, I got a I started making good money at that. I got a nice refund check one year, and I said, I'm gonna buy a house. It was either that or some rims on my car. So <laughs> about the same price. Uh, yeah, I was like, <laughs> get some rims. So, um, I, I, my uncle was a realtor. He ended up helping me buy a property, but I bought a property that was like 60 miles away from where I grew up, where he lived. So he's like, man, I can't go out to Modesto to go show you properties. You're going to have to do some of that on your own. So it was Yahoo, and I drive out there and knock on people's doors, like 22, like, can I see your house? I'm, I'm pre-approved. <laughs> so I, I ended up finding a house. He wrote the offer, and I'm like, man, that was, that was pretty easy. So since I was 60 miles away from my house, I was like, what, what, should I, what should I do? I'm going to go to the junior college get my real estate license. So I uh, got my real estate license, and I've been doing it ever since. So when I moved out here, I didn't really know anybody. So I, what better way to meet a lot of people was Facebook. So I, I was a big MySpace person. I had a Facebook account <laughs> for a while, but I never used it until I really said, well, I'm going to do this for real estate. And, you know, I was always into computers my whole life, but social media was newer, it was, and I never had a, that much experience in it, So, uh, especially not with real estate. So I was Googling how to use social media for real estate agents, how to use Twitter, what is a hashtag. You know, I didn't know what any of that stuff was. So, I mean, the people that have some sort of computer background, should be able to do it really easy just by doing research. You know, Lisa had asked me, like, how do you write a blog? I'm like, well, Google how to write a blog for a realtor, and there'll be <laughs> blogs about how to write blogs. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's how I learned, and I think that's the best because these bloggers are showing you how to blog. So enough said. I'm sure most of you know I'm heavily into social media. Uh, nowadays, I get almost, I'd say, 80% of my business uh, incoming phone calls incoming emails, people just contacting me. So no more door knocking, no more cold calls. Um, the phone just rings. You know, I found you online. So a lot of that comes from online reviews and consistency. Okay, so anything that you do, you're going to door knock, you're going to cold call. If you do it all day long, you're going to be good at it. You're going to get results. So if you want to do social media and you're like, well, I'm going to post here and there, it's just don't be surprised if, you know, don't start calling you. I've been doing it for years. I put a lot of effort into it and consistent, 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 consistent. And the biggest advice I have is, you know, when you do post, I mean, I know everybody here has a Facebook page, you know, always be positive. Don't always talk about real estate. Um, one of the biggest things is, uh, you know, stay away from things that look like, well, this guy's not as professional as I would prefer. So I try to just, everything I post is for the general public, you know, for everybody to see. So one thing that I want to start on is, you know, everyone has a personal page, and I'm sure everybody gets business from the, from the personal page, but that's from, like, your sphere. People you know, they're friends of friends. If you want to reach out and really geographically target, you know, your county or city or certain type of property, you need to get a Facebook business page. Okay? Uh, maybe people have one, maybe people have you know, set it up, but you really need to get involved. Okay? I hire a service that will post for me once a day, uh, no matter what I do. Uh, so it's just to me like a fill in case I'm not around, I'm busy, I'm posting every day. You know? um, with the business page, I am open for business. It's like my doors are open. You know, people can go to my site. It's always new content that day. Um, you know, just if you haven't seen it, this is my uh, Facebook business page. Uh, so I do hire services, eighty dollars a month, and they help me promote. Uh, so as you can see right here, in this just this week, I've gotten twenty-five new page likes, and I've reached twenty-five thousand people with my posts. 
Okay, I have uh, 1,724 likes. Uh, people check into my location. Uh, not only can you, you know, just a regular Facebook page, but you know, I, I have apps where you can find a home. You can do a search from your Facebook business page, your featured listings. Every month I run a contest. I give away $800 in gift cards. Uh, so those things are all automated. Those happen regardless whether I'm around or not, whether I'm sick or not, anything. And I update this frequently, frequently, frequently. Um, here I have uh, 45 public reviews. You know, I have 39 five stars plus a lot of people here that rated me one, two, three, that most of them are realtors. <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> so, so I run promoted, uh, promoted ads. Okay. So as you can see here, I've boosted this post. I've reached 12,000 people so far. Um, let's go into the post details. So I've, and this is about this week. Oh, I posted September 5th, so what's today, the 10th? Yeah, so in five days, I've reached 13,000 people. Now, I consider this like like a postcard marketing campaign almost, okay? So I sent out 14,000 postcards, and about 400 of them clicked on them. Uh, they clicked on it, and every time you click on it, um, we'll see the photo rather than a link, and I just included my link. So some people are clicking on this link. Okay. Now it shows that, let me see, 91 link, link click, clicks. So this isn't my best ad. Um, the ones I run in Oxnard, they're huge. Um, go ahead. Can I ask you, is, that is not your listing? Yeah. That is my listing. It is your listing. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I, I typically only run promoted on okay. you know, my listings. If I could go down here and find, um, I think it's well, the one I just, yeah, well, I, I, okay, so this one is an example. I didn't really, see, I didn't boost this one too much. I, I usually, what, what do you mean by boost? Boost basically means I am running an ad, and I will show you exactly what I do to run an ad. I'm running geographically targeted ads, so that's something that you cannot do with a Facebook personal page, which is the number one reason you need a business page. If I take a listing, I am going to run a daily ad for maybe the life of the listing, just depending, at least while it's active. And for instance, let's take that Westlake one I listed. Okay? How do you get it? I got the Westlake listing, how I get most of my business. Okay? The phone rings. Hi, it's Jason Walters. Hi, my name is Don. I'm an agent from Missouri. Okay? A guy from Missouri contacted me. He found me online. Uh, the current uh, sellers weren't happy with their listing agent. They fired him, and they asked their real estate buddy, which I guess writes books on real estate. They were like, oh, it's very good that he picked you because he writes books on it. Like, okay. So he found me from Missouri online and referred me to the people. And when I get these referrals, uh, or, you know, even sellers, same thing. I found you online. They are... Basically, I'm doing the listing presentation while I'm out working, and my listing presentation is them researching me. So, for instance, uh, one of my last listings, the guy said, well, it's between you and two other people. Uh, we searched online. You had the most reviews. One of them didn't even have a profile on Zillow. One of them didn't, wasn't active, so we liked your reviews, all your past sales. I showed up like, okay, well, Sign, right? And they contacted me, weeded me out of the competition, and said, I want to work with you. So I listed the property, and, you know, I'm not in that part of the area. You know, I'm over here in West Ventura County all the time. So my main thing is going to be to run a geographically targeted ad. Yeah, I mean, when you say run a geographically targeted ad, how does that go on? Because I'm pretty not, I have a page, but I think like most people, my page just sort of sits there. Well, so for instance, when I post this, okay, mm -hmm. the thing that's going to go out, another happy seller, this part's going to be the most important. So you want to keep it short and sweet because if you see the ads on the right-hand side, they're a little catchy, a couple words. 
they're not, you know, you don't want to really go in depth in these because you want it to be short and sweet, catchy, a nice picture so they click on it. So, you know, this one got 8,000 people because I, I only run like a $20 ad on this one just to the city of Oxnard. So it's not like, it's not one of my big ones on, on the listing. You know, I'll, I'll spend $300 on a Facebook ad. So the one in Westlake, what I did was I targeted, of course, Westlake Village, and I did a radius around Westlake Village. And obviously no one that's 20 years old is going to buy a house in Westlake, so I picked the age up, you know, up to 40 years old, plus city of Westlake, 25-mile radius. Uh, that's pretty much my net I do on everyone. Oxnard, same thing. I'm going to run a radius at least 10 to 25 miles. And you think about Westlake, the property is an equestrian home, so I targeted Los Angeles County. I targeted uh, Camarillo to people that like horses. Uh, so anyone that likes horses or has a pet that's a horse, they are going to see a targeted ad. Okay. So I can I can pick I can pick whatever I like. For, I, I took a listing in Lancaster. Okay. A, f a friend of mine from Facebook. Okay. I never met her at all. I've never met her. She contacted me, wanted me to list her mobile home in uh, Lancaster so she could buy a house here in Ventura. So here's the ad I ran in Lancaster. Okay, this is a mobile home, thirty-nine thousand dollars. As you can see, I have over five hundred likes on it. So I'm not in Lancaster. How, let me go to this postable. Oh, I'm trying to. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to pull up the stats. I could do that over here. Um, let me pull up my whole stats. But I ran that ad in Lancaster because I'm not in there. I've been running it like indefinitely because I can't sell this mobile home. And I, I want to get it sold so I can get a house here. And out of that ad, I ran in Lancaster, Palmdale. And I just made just everybody. And out of that ad, I had uh, I took a listing. Okay, I took a listing in Palmdale. Obviously, I'm not in Palmdale. I, re I referred it out to an agent. So that one ad brought me another listing. It brought me a buyer that wanted to buy in Ventura. Uh, I haven't sold the mobile home yet because, uh, you know, I guess Lancaster's not that desirable. <laughs> yeah, no, I've, I've, I've it's never It's a beautiful been. town. But it. Where does your. Um, where does this ad go to? It's not going to their Facebook pages. Right? It is going to their personal Facebook really? pages. It goes in their feed, yeah. yeah. And I have, yeah. and it, it's oh. not, not no only, not and only is too. it running on the side, but it's also running in their feed. I have people post like, stop, I don't know how you right, run on my Facebook right. page, stop running these ads, and you know, I uh, ban and de delete and ban them from my page. They're not allowed anymore. And you know it's like, yeah, no, I, I show up on your page. The and the strategy does work. I mean, uh, Jeff and I had a, a listing in the Ventura Keys, which is a you know it's a boat dock home, and I know that like Orange County, like Newport, those areas are just so ridiculously expensive. So we see Ventura Keys as really like this affordable boat dock community. Um, so we placed our ad. We didn't even run it in Ventura at all. We ran it in from San Fernando Valley all the way into L.A. And we were having an open house that day, so I ran the I ran an ad in the morning into L.A. We had a guy come to the property two hours later that saw it on Facebook, brought his agent with him, and that that ended up being our buyer. You know, so I mean, it's How do you it's run the ad? Do you contact? It, it's all done on the Facebook page, and if you'd like, I could show you a sample on how on the business page. That's why I say if you don't. Have a business page, then you need to start a business page. And you know, if you have a business, it's, it's like a checkbook. You know, you start out check number one, and they're looking at you like, uh, what is this? I don't want to catch this. You know, you have one like, two likes. So if someone comes to your page, damn, two likes. You know, they're amateurs. They're new. <laughs> yeah. So you need to hurry because you know I, I have almost two thousand, and I get a lot of from my running ads. So here's the month of August. Um, just so you can get a glance, uh, August 1st, I had 2,257 people view my posts. And then you can see when I'm not running uh, big ads, it's, it's in the hundreds. But when I'm running ads, I mean, we're in the thousands. So this is every, look at how many, in, in one day I have 1,800. So how many are coming to my site in the month? There were thousands, tens of thousands of people. So, uh, oh, 
It brings an important point too because <laughs> we should all be tracking what our marketing is doing. You know, I mean, so often what we do is we just fire stuff out there and just hope and pray it works, and and we just keep sometimes we're doing the same things over and over again without really knowing our results. You know, I mean, if we're just hammering stuff and then it's not we're not getting the results and we're not looking at those things, it's really hard to be able to alter and evolve your marketing strategy. And that's the truth is, is that it is a moving target. Who, who, who's here important. has 7,500 people in one day uh, come to their Facebook page? And, you know, it's not, it's not like a personal post. This was, I have a house for sale, you know, who wants it? You know, because people get a lot of hits on there. Hey, check me out with my baby, stuff like that. But, you know, when you post like, hey, I have a house for sale, you get like two, you know. So I had 7,500 in, in just 24 hours. Well, think about how cost effective it is to try to send out 7,500 postcards versus getting 7,500 views. And I'm hitting I'm posts. Curious, though, are you, did you abandon print altogether? No, no, oh, no, no. Okay. No. I know, so, so part of my audience wouldn't be computer literate. It works, well, yeah. it works in concert with one another, too, because it's great when they can see you on Facebook and get the card. Sure. But I'm I mean, only that's... sending out 100 to 200 postcards around every listing. I mean, I'm sure I'm overlapping because I do it every time when I list and when I sell. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm overlapping. I sell a lot, a lot of houses in Oxnard, so people are getting multiple of my postcards. But I do still sell, send out postcards. But, you know, just a little statistics. Google is the number one most visited site, okay? Facebook is number two. The average person spends five hours in general on total a day on Facebook. Okay? So I say that realtors, realtors are most likely to see my new listing on Facebook before they see it on the multiple listing service. Okay? I've sold houses. They call me, hey, I've seen your ha house on Facebook. Is that for sale? I'm like, check the multiple, you know? Check the multiple. They check the multiple. Oh, it is on the market, and they send me an offer. Their buyer seen my Facebook ad, contacted the real estate agent, which contacted me. I sold the house. Okay. So you know, on a, if I'm good on the internet on my MLS listings, if you guys check the numbers, I'll get like a hundred public hits and like three hundred agent hits. Where in like two seconds, I get four hundred views on my ads. And you know, print. It was gonna take you a week. You know, I hit go, and the phone starts to ring in 15 minutes. You know, hey, I'm calling about your listing on Facebook. Hey, I'm calling about some days if I have a hot listing and I, and I run a big ad on Facebook, the phone is ringing. And not just agents, but buyers. And agents, I mean, I listed the property on the multiple listing. You know? <laughs> but they are calling me from my Facebook ad. I mean, I don't really need the multiple listing service, honestly. You know, with Zillow and Facebook and stuff like that. When you run these ads, is it just going to your friends or? No, no, no. I am running. You know, I am running geographically targeted ads to the mass general public. Okay, I am creeping into your computer. Most people are like, "Well, I go door knocking," because I'm running geographically targeted Facebook ads. It's not pay for click. Oh, so you pay for it through Facebook? It yeah. it shows up. Yeah, I'm running Facebook ads through the business page. That's why I say you have to have a business page because you cannot run those on your personal page. Okay? Or a community page, am I correct? You, it has to be, business. no, yeah. 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 It has to be a business, okay? Yeah. So Facebook sells. I'll show you right now. I'll show you right now. Um, no, I do all that on my own, okay? I have ads that are running that a service does do for me. Uh, it costs me $20 a week. I just started. And they're generic, want to sell your home, happy homeowners with a for sale blurry sign in the back, stuff like that. So let's go to my um, manage ads, okay? Um, so you can see that real quick. So it's in here, in my Facebook uh, personal page, you know. So so here's a little example, uh, you know. So so people think that you know it, it's not it's not cheap. So in the month of August, you know, I spent two forty. But look at my total account spending. I've already spent. Three thousand three hundred and fifty-five dollars on Facebook. Can you go back to that first page real quick, Jason? Yeah, but that's that's. That's, that's not a lot compared to. No, you know, it's right not a lot if you compare a page of homes and land. No. The, the point I want to yeah. make. The point I want to make right here is is that if he is going to go to a listing presentation, this is his proof of how oh, he yeah. does marketing. Right. Yeah. So he would use this as a snapshot to say, this is how. And, and how many engagements, how many people clicked through, what is the algorithm, what's the analysis of how his marketing is working. And that's really important. This ad I spent $209, 
I, I total reach of 32,000 people, and uh, 2,300 people came to my page. And this ad ran from uh, July 18th to August 1st. Okay, so uh, in about, what is that, 12 days, uh, I engaged with 2,400 people to visit my site. Okay, so let's say I want to create an ad. Okay, so let's create an ad. This is in my personal page, but since I have a business page, I have this option available. So what kind of results would you want for your ad? Do I want clicks to my website? Me, I always want page, page post engagement. Okay, so I have a few pages. I'm going to pick Jason Walters. Uh, I am going to pick a post. So I can go down here. I can advertise. Let's say I'll run an ad right now. Okay, uh, showing my Westlake Trails home. Okay, so I took a picture of my showing, and I always do stuff like that. I mean, I am taking a picture. That's why in the tech, there, hold your piece of technology, get your tablet. I'm like, well, I'm gonna hold my phone because I mean, that's <coughs> everywhere I go. I mean, they walk in to go look at the house. I'm like posting about it, you know. <laughs> oh well, yeah, yeah, finish, finish up. I'm, I'm almost done here. Um, so yeah, here. I'm getting my next client. <laughs> <laughs> So, and, and uh, you know, no pressure. I open the door, walk in. You want the house? If you don't want it, come on, let's get out of here. Now, let's go. <laughs> okay, so this ad right here, let's just say I'm going to run it in the city of Oxnard. Uh, I typically don't do 50 miles. I'm going to do a 25-mile radius. In the city of Oxnard, I will do 13 and up because uh, most people that are on social media are younger. I would say most people in Oxnard older generation, uh, you know, I guess most of them don't have computers here in the city. <laughs> so I'm going to make a real quick point here is that when doing this, you can see Facebook is the only media that can say, I know about who I'm advertising to. So if you're advertising just with postcards, you're sending postcards to all types of people. Where here you can say, I want women only who like boats or men who, you know, you can target to a particular audience, large or small. And that's what's so critical about these Facebook marketings. And just to speak to that and to Jason as far as the how well targeted these ads are, uh, remember the the campaign that was done for the mobile app downloads, the agent with the highest amount of downloads, and they got uh, it was twenty five thousand dollars additional or whatnot. Um, they actually, in order to promote the winner of that challenge, actually the top two, both ran targeted Facebook ads, and because they could use personal identification, you know, like all these other things, uh, you could do newly engaged individuals because you can set that as your status now, you know, newly engaged or whatnot. You can target just how specifically, and he ran his uh, ad specifically to, you know, uh, new women. Would you like to win $50,000 for your dream wedding, your dream honeymoon, a down payment on your house? And you can target those specifically for all sorts of, I mean, minute details. Mm -hmm. Who's seen an ad to buy a shirt for Keller Williams? Oh, yeah. God, come okay. on. <laughs> Realtor, I sell houses, whatever, okay? Yeah. There's, there's, you're seeing that because... You work at Keller Williams and you are a realtor. I mean, on my page, they're gonna. I see shavers, men's clubs, stuff like that. You women, you're not getting those ads, okay? I'm getting them. We're getting them. They're they're targeted. Where where else are you gonna target people? I mean, uh, Facebook is the number one biggest. They want it's a census. They give you give everything, all your information. I mean, your baby that one minute out of the womb has a digital uh, <laughs> a, a digital imprint on Facebook, okay? So everyone is on there. So, I mean, people say, well, I'm knocking on doors. I said, well, I'm at the dinner table, you know. I'm at the dinner table. They're like, hey, Mom, I mean, I've had a lady call me. Oh, hey, I'm sitting here with my son, and he's on his phone, and he, he's seen this house that you have for sale. I mean, it, he's in high school, and he's telling his mom about this new property that's on his phone. You know, knock all you want. I mean, keep knocking, you know, because I'm in. <laughs> I'm in the door. Uh, because at our seminar last week, someone asked, how do you explain away for not doing as many print ads? Mm -hmm. And I think this is how you explain it. Well, okay. if I run a $300 ad, I am going to hit 50,000 individuals. And how, many, how much is 50,000 postcards? And they're going to end up in the trash. And these people are going to click my links. They're going to go to my page. They're going to like my page. And we are going to interact until they are ready to buy. You know, they... they 
They they know me. They see me and oh hey you're the realtor. I'm like oh, leave me alone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, Oxnard plus 25 miles. I'm gonna pick age 13 and up. Um, you know we could even go and say you know English if we want. Why do you um, not pick like 21 and up? And, and the reason, and, and like in Westlake, I, I picked up the age group, but in Oxnard I'm not because I'm going to get a lot of people, I don't care if they're high school kids because they're going to tell their parents about the house for sale. They know they're looking for a house. And you know what? Uh, they're going to buy a house for me and because they're going to be like, man, this who else does real estate? I've known this guy for five years. <laughs> are, are you paying per number of locations that it goes to? Check it out. I'm paying for the budget. potential okay, reach. So that's why you would do. You don't feel it's cost effective to do 39 and below in Westlake because you don't feel that the customer. It, it, it's but like, it might be worth it in Oxford to pay for it. Like Dennis mentioned, he ran an ad for 50 bucks and it got eaten up in an instant. Okay, I ran an ad for 300 dollars and it got eaten up in 24 hours. Now, who wants to spend 300 dollars a day in marketing? I don't. Okay, so I've ran. I've learned. And now I, I limit my yeah. advertising to per day dollars, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I don't want it, it. It starts. I mean, you put it vague. I mean, I've ran ads where I'm targeting all of LA, all of Ventura County, and I am just watching the money go. It's okay. like, oh my god! So and you can't. Yeah, you can control how much. I per can day stop you it. I can pause it and change it, but. You know, like when when you're finished with your day at work and you come back, oh, let me check out my annual. Like, holy oh, shit, <laughs> <laughs> I spent five hundred dollars. Go back to the stock market. Yeah, so so you have to really narrow it down. I mean, you don't want to waste, but people. I, I also, for every dollar I spend on Facebook, I'm gonna get a like. So worst case scenario, I'm paying for likes. Okay, and I I call it like you know real estate gambling poker because you have a listing, obviously you want to double it. Hey, you don't have a buyer. I'm running an ad, and I'm I'm going like this. Come on, you know, <laughs> come on, hit. You know, I'm waiting for it to hit. I'm waiting for someone to say, "Oh, I'm pre-approved, and that house is perfect." They call, and I've had it happen. They call me, and I'm like, "Uh, double in." You know, it cost me a hundred dollars. I I pulled the buyer. It's like I'm I'm fishing. You know, I'm sitting back on my computer with a big net, <laughs> trying to reel in people, and 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 that's how I get a lot of likes as well. So just this pretty basic Oxnard ad, 13 plus. I'm really not going to do anything else. Now you see the potential reach is $1,500 a day at $5. Now let's say I went up to $50 a day. Now the $50 a day, my potential reach is going to go up from 5100 to 13000 Now let's say I run a lifetime budget ad and I say $350. I am going to reach... That was almost perfect if it would have it would have hit. Um, this is the daily reach still. Okay, so I ran the ad for. I need to change my cartridge. I ran. This is a month long ad. See now I could go down. I could say I just want to run into the 24th of September. Now I hit 7,000 people. I, it's the 10th. I just want to run it until Monday over the weekend. Now I'm going to hit 18,000 people a day for $350. Now let's say I want to go all out. I got a million dollar listing in the city of Oxnard. I'm going to spend a thousand dollars on this ad. I'm going to reach 44,000 people. Okay. So, and that's going to happen in five days. Where are you going to go target 50,000 people in five days? Right. How, are you, how are you qualifying if you're getting qualified here? Do you know what I'm saying? Well, for me, uh, I, I am... Zillow was trying to sell me good thing. Well, you're going to have a gazillion hits. Zillow? Zillow? Who? Who's yeah, trying to sell you? Zillow. Yeah, Zillow. Zillow's amazing, I'll tell you that. Um, I have a Zillow, and I, you know, for, for me... It's all about, uh, it's a numbers game, right? It's real estate game. is a real numbers game. So if I have 100,000 people visiting my post, mm -hmm. I am going to get some business. If I'm not selling that house, someone's going to call me because they want a house in Ventura. This person wants a condo over here. Okay, so another num the, the number one, another thing about Facebook business page is Google crawls your posts, okay? Facebook personal pages, you can type all you want. It's not going to come up in Google search results. If they are not your friend, they will never see your post. I'm about getting away from more than just my friends because, you know, I'm going to get business from them on my my personal page, which I'm sure a lot of us get business on the personal page. You want to get away from your friends and hit the mass public, you got to get a business page. Now, I, I can confidently say people call me from all over the country, okay? People get on airplanes to come visit me to come look at property. And the way that they do this is because they find my posts, okay, either on Facebook, 
either on my blog, and those are crawled by Google. Okay? If Google is not crawling your posts, then you are wasting your time. Okay? Facebook business page will show up in Google search results. But you also tag teaming yourself with Google Plus, which is also... I, I advertise yeah. everywhere. Yeah. So I'm not just hitting Facebook. I'm hitting Google Plus. I'm hitting Instagram. I'm hitting Foursquare. I'm hitting LinkedIn. I'm hitting Blogger. I'm hitting uh, a lot. Okay, I'm hitting everything. If Pinterest, if, if it's a platform, I have an account. Because now with Facebook, you log in with your Facebook, it pulls up all the people that you know. I'm coming up in that list. I have the same look, the same picture, everything across the board. They recognize me. Okay, They know who I am. I don't ever change my profile picture. I haven't changed it since I started. I will have to change it eventually, but it's the brand. You know, People are always changing it. How do I know who this person is? They need the recognition. Are you going to change your logo every day? No. My personal page, that little circle, that's my logo. You know, that's, a, that's it. So, okay, Facebook's important. Business page, you see right here, you can target all these people. I want to get them off of Facebook, okay? It's not all about, I mean, Facebook is just like the hub for me. They need to all come to my web page. So I have a web page as well. This web page is powered through Zillow. I update it constantly. Uh, I have, uh, it, it updates my, my Facebook feed, as you can see, is on here. My business page feeds to my Facebook business page. When people click on a link, it takes them to these posts. So, for instance, if you guys seen my uh, North Oxnard single family home sold, okay, I used to post pictures. Now I'm posting links. Okay, you go to click on the picture, it drives you away from Facebook, and it's going to take you to this page right here. So it has the same basically thing on Facebook. From here, you can share, you can tweet. I'm logged into my Facebook business page, so I can't like it. But if I was on my personal page, I would, oh, there we go. See, look, 100 people have liked my, they have gone to my web page and clicked that like button on my web page, 100 people. Okay, so when I scroll down, I have links to everywhere. Now, if you guys don't know what Bitly links are, obviously a lot of the links are really long. If some of you, that, uh, the MLS Incorporated, where you can have a link and share it, the thing is, you know, 20 pages long. You use Bitly, you shorten the links, now you can customize them. So look at Jason Sell My Home. It looks a lot more attractive than, you know, some, some weird link. You can leave a comment. Uh, people come here and guess what? Oh, latest real estate. Oh, my God, let me click on these. So whenever I see, when I do my analytics, which I'll show you next, you can see that these are getting a lot of clicks, okay? So someone goes, oh, my God, this is, Look at this house. Oh, my God. You know, they, they came and went to my site because they were on Facebook. Okay? Think about it. They're on their Facebook page. They don't even know me. I'm showing up. Oh, they want to zoom in on the picture. They click it. What? It takes them to my, my, my website. On my website, they go, oh, okay. Oh, why did it take me off of Facebook? Oh, my God. Wait. I'm looking for a house, and this house on Ironstone is available. It's going to show them the house. They can, they're going to click this button right here. Oh, I want to see it. They're going to schedule a showing. They're going to fill in this info. They're going to pick a date and hit send, and I get these all the time. I've never met this person. I have no idea who they are. I get an appointment, okay, an appointment at a house. I just, they want to see it. You know, I skip all the, let me get your information. They just give it to me, and they want me to meet them at the house already. Excellent. Okay, so, so I... I have a question real quick. Um, when you go on your Facebook page and you send out the, uh, the ad, Mm -hmm. Does that go automatically to your website? Automatically. Everything, okay, so I also have different, uh, if, if you guys have ever heard, I, I, it's called ifttt.com. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. If.com, it is like my virtual assistant. I can, I can post something, include a specific hashtag, and it's automatically going to send it different places that I want it to go. So it'll feed to my LinkedIn if I want, my Tumblr if I want, whatever I want. I, I include certain hashtags. Uh, it's called ifttt.com. I also use friendsplusme.com. And, you know, if you're not computer savvy, um, you know, I guess we can uh, set up an appointment. I, I charge by the hour. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's, it's, I've had a computer since I was five. Okay? I got my first computer in my room when I was, like, 16. I didn't leave the house. Um, I stay up until 2 in the morning. I'm vlogging. I'm you know, I, I it, it, so my my point by saying that is if you're not computer savvy, and it's going to take you a year to learn how to use the computer, you know, you're going to have to pay someone a lot of money, and it's not going to be authentic. These people are going to meet you, and you're not even going to match your. I mean, you guys know your statuses is like 
it's like I'm looking into you. You know, you, you know those some of those people. You're like this person. I'm deleting them. They're crazy. You know, you guys get those. So your statuses say a lot about you. So if you're posting stuff, then they meet you, and you're like a whole different person. You know, it, it, it's it shows. So anytime you're paying somebody to do, you know, set up your posts and do stuff for you. It's not reflecting you. It's usually generic content that's kind of offered out to everyone, so it's not separating you, you know, from the 1,500 other customers that they may have with the same exact posts that are coming out. Yes, but can you get someone, you know, if you were an agent, let's say, who remembers a real estate book, can you get someone to set you into all this and then you can feed it? It's just this, all this is a lot, this is a lot of work. It is a lot of work, okay, and that's what I stress. If you think you're like, Oh, I'm gonna do social media. You know, I'm gonna post this picture of this house, and you're like, well, why? Why am I not getting the, the feedback that Jason does? It's because I eat, sleep, live. You know, uh, I'm doing everything. I'm I have my phone in my hand. I carry around spare chargers in my pockets. You know, it's it's my livelihood. How much time per day do you spend doing this? I mean, if you had to put it all in account, I mean, it's hours if you add it all together. I mean, yeah, it, 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 it makes. If I get a bzzz and I'm like, oh, uh, how much is this house? I'm as fast as I can, you know. I'm anxious. Well, that. I'm saying setting up this. well it, it's setting it up is a piece of cake compared to maintaining. You know, the, the setting up part is, you know, I did that years ago, and now I'm just feeding the bucket. You know, I just have to update, update. Like he says, I go to someone's page. It shows posts from July. I'm you know they're they're inactive. They're not part of the club. <laughs> okay. So and you see your web page is so important. So Facebook is just an avenue. And I'll, I'll show you right now with my analytics that this is the month of August. So in the month of August, uh, I had 3,172 unique individuals come to my web page. Okay. 25% of them are returning, so they want to come back for more. 75% they're they're brand new. Okay, so uh, out of this, you can see it's a lot easier on my phone. I'm on my phone so much, but uh, just, I mean, just looking at that on my phone, it'll actually break it down and show me where they're all coming from. It will do that on here too. Out of curiosity, what kind of phone do you have? I have a Galaxy Five, um, Samsung Galaxy Five. I would suggest that phone or the Apple Five. <laughs> Constant debate. Um, acquisition. Well, I, I I don't I don't really party. You know, I have two little babies. I'm a single dad. Uh, so I mean, I, I get off of work and and I go uh, make dinner and take baths and and, and wipe dirty butts. That's that's what I do. Uh, that's my party. <laughs> so uh, number one, you could see acquisition. Guess where all my hits come from. They come from social media, and this is the majority is going to be Facebook. The majority of my Facebook hits are coming from my ads. Okay, if you're not running ads, you're not doing it right. Okay, direct. That's next best thing. People are directly coming to my website, not from Facebook, from necessarily typing it in, clicking on one of my direct links. Um, Okay, so or, these up, your, this your is my website. website okay? okay, so you see organic search results. Okay, if you guys are not coming up, people, how did you find me? Oh, I searched "good realtor in Oxnard," and your information <laughs> came up. Okay, I do a lot of reviews. Your reviews, guess what? They go to Google. Okay, if you're not getting reviews, you know it's it's like you're you've never sold a house before. Okay, so I I get the reviews, and uh, they go out. I get uh, people that say they type in a property address, they come to my website. Uh, I had a lady said that she was watching one of those HGTV shows about the cheapest beach is. Port Wainini came up, she searched Port Wainini, and, and guess what? She found me. Okay, so uh, what was I going to go to next? The direct organic search results. Um, so I, I get a lot of hits from there. Oh, Nancy wanted me to show. My not your not your web not your not your mail, honey. No. <laughs> she wants me to show my um. Wrong folder. Wrong folder. Uh, wrong folder. Wrong folder. We, we can open we can open this one. Look, we have wired funds to title. Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Um. So if I reply to her, um, I have an email signature that goes out. Okay, this goes out to everybody that I email. Okay, it has my thanks, my information. 
Um, then you see free property search updated every 24 hours. Now this is the part that gets me, you know, a lot of clicks, a lot of business. I have an about me page. You click here, go to my recent closings. I have 19 Zillow reviews with 83 verified sales, 10 Trulia recommendations, 39 verified sales, 18 LinkedIn recommendations, 100 endorsements, uh, 10 five-star reviews, 25 recommendations on stick.com, 17 five-star reviews on Yelp, Facebook business page, 45 uh, ratings. Uh, you know, I'm a Toastmasters Best Speaker Award winner, treasurer, uh, founder of sponsor of Ventura County Moms and Dads. Uh, I also do events, um, neighborhood stuff, so I run a, a kids group and I also run a, a Ventura County event Facebook page. Uh -oh. Jason, I'm sorry to interrupt. Just a real quick question for you. Who hosts your website? A Zillow. I'm a Zillow Premier agent. Okay. Uh, I pay $600 a month to Zillow um, with the help of um, co-marketing efforts. Co-marketing efforts. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I get a lot of hits on Zillow, but Zillow gives the agents a free website. My website is um, hooked up to my IDX, so it's, I had to send in paperwork to the association. My website's updated every 24 hours, and there are no backup, no pending, no sold on my website. I know for a fact people are going on my website to search properties that they find on Zillow to see if they are active because I get a lot of house not found. Okay, so people are searching houses that aren't coming up because they are not active. Um, I, there's options on my webpage where I can take those out because as you know, it goes up back up. It's still active on the websites for like a year and a half <laughs> where on mine, they are updated every 24 hours. Um, people, I had a, a lender call me the other day. Oh, yeah, me and the client, we're, we're looking for properties for sale on your webpage. And my webpage is the multiple listing service. So, and that's a, uh, something I get for free from uh, Zillow for being a, a premier agent. So that's uh, that's pretty much it. You know, that that's that's what I do. I, I you know, all I really touched on was Facebook. I, I do all of them. Uh, Facebook is the, you know my. It's all about my web page. What gets me my hits from my web page is basically Facebook. Facebook is like the hub. Are you paying extra money like to Trulia uh, or Zillow? Uh, Zillow, I pay uh, six hundred dollars a month. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think it's important is to like really know who your audience is mm -hmm. and try to spend time where they hang out. Just like old school you used to hang out at the yacht club because that's where your customers are. This you know social media it's, it's important to pick the network that makes the most sense. The generation coming up right now thinks Facebook is uncool. Mm -hmm. You know, my daughter does not go to Facebook yeah. because that's where her parents hang out. <laughs> so nobody wants to hang out where their parents hang out. So they're all over Twitter and Instagram. Of course Facebook owns Instagram, but that you know, it's it's important to really make sure that you're identifying the network that makes the most sense for your audience, um, because for those of you that are new or beginners, trying to do all ten networks at once is going to be very overwhelming, and you're really setting yourself up for failure. There's just no way. Where if you can pick one that works for you, just put all of your time and attention into that one, and then know that eventually you'll be able to branch off into the other networks. Yeah, I have. I run them all. You know, I have about at least five that I'm very active with. And all in all, I have uh, over 10,000 followers. So I have 10,000 people that, you know, seeing my social media. So without the followers and... Okay, looking at all of this, do you still market to, to traditional farm? I don't farm. Uh, when people ask me if I farm, I say I farm the city of Oxnard. Mm -hmm. I farm it virtually. You know, I, I virtually door knock, I virtually farm. I, I do everything that everyone else does, but I do it online and what, what I believe to be more efficient. Um, but it's like I said, it's about your niche. You know, if, if it's going to take you an hour to do what it takes me five minutes, obviously you're going to have a little harder time. You know, it's going to be more difficult. So, uh, you know, first, the people who are into computers are going to have a better time at this because most of people don't understand you know, they don't get it. You know, when I start, even sellers, they're like, what is this? You do what? You do all this? You know, they don't know what a AdWords campaign is, you know, Facebook ad is. And, you know, but when I show them examples, you know, then it's, you know, a sold. Can I, uh, Sam, can I talk to you and have you address uh, a, a video clip outside of the website and how that is organically promoted? Yeah, so uh, one of the things that I also do on the side is I have a, a video production company. Um, so we do uh, commercial videos for, for businesses. Um, we actually did one pretty recently that was fun for a landscape 
uh, company and it's a family business and if you Google we don't just cut grass you'll be able to um, watch it but um, the oh, we'll go somewhere else or there it's right there it's a longer video I don't have to watch the whole thing but but basically you know they they actually got contacted by um, HGTV um, that they're going to start having a show of landscapers and they needed to do a promotional um, video uh, to apply to be to get on the show. So we did this video the for best landscaper there is. You bet your sweet grass. <laughs> My friend Peter. <laughs> staring at your wife. <laughs> oh God, better get back to work. <laughs> Hello, homeowners. I'm Jeremy Scarlett of Scarlett's Landscaping, and we do it all yeah. in your yard. So um, the the purpose of this was to obviously give the their prospective customers a background into the company, and we and we had we had fun doing it. So. It was all about just really showing the personality. It's a father and son own business, and the two of them are complete dorks. So, I mean, it was really, really fun to do. But what happens is, is that the videos that, that, that we do, when posted to YouTube, Google owns YouTube, as we all, most of us know, is that you, the video becomes another marketing piece that you can add to your stew. So um, video results now are showing up in Google results. And to me, especially as real estate people, they're buying us. And so if you have a video that talks about you and who you are and your background and all of that kind of stuff, and for me, depending on, depending on your approach, if you can show that you have like a personality, that you have kind of a fun side, they can really get to know who, you're, who you are before ever calling you. I just think it's such an effective presentation versus them going to a static page where they just see your picture. Um, you know, you get so much more of an authentic look um, when doing a video, and you know, you can you can obviously go crazy like this. I mean, this was like a fifteen thousand dollar project, but you know, we had like crew come out from New York and stuff. You don't you don't need to do that. Um, you know, it can be something shot very reasonably, but to have people get a chance to get to know you and hear you speak and talk about your approach, and then to also have it have the opportunity to have to be found via YouTube. You can embed it on your website, so when people first come to your page, they can just click, click play, and you know, keep it short and sweet, minute, ninety seconds, and uh, it can be a really, really effective tool to add, you know, add to your marketing. And on that same note, with the YouTube, um, when you go in, you can actually see the little CC button for closed captioning. You can go back and actually review your text and create kind of a closed caption for and type in. Um, it, it can auto sense some of the language, but you obviously need to go in and correct some. But all of that content there underneath the closed captioning too, um, Google crawls it. Mm -hmm. So it's they're index. reading, yeah. So if you're, you know, making sure that your your uh, closed captioning content is is correct, uh, when they search, you know, for homes for sale, if you have that in your video and obviously typed in there, it's also going to pull that up. I think it also has a, a lot of uh, purpose for geographic farming. Mm -hmm. So if you were, if you're a heavy geographic farmer, you would use a geographic uh, specific, and you would use pediment signs, pictures of talking of you, going through the territory, and that could, in fact, come in the top ten results every time. And we are lazy people today, unfortunately. So if a video clip exists, that little box in the first ten results, it you may have three results for best real estate agent or real estate agent in a name the geographic territory and you will get three or four <coughs> results in the top ten by using video in addition to your website. So you would embed it in your website, but you would also say, this is Nancy and Mordecai, Keller Williams Realty, specializing in whatever is that. And what Candace is mentioning is, is that those, that words, those words <coughs> on that video is actually indexed. And we've done this for a long time and really shown the value of that 
But if you're talking to sellers, I'm always about how am I going to convert more sellers to listings. So is that can you guys agree with me with that? Yeah. So if, with this kind of marketing, I think what it does is it's true they're getting results, but also what you can see is <coughs> is that it's a really clean way for you to go out and show sellers why you are different. It's a defining <coughs> difference for you, and you can really use this type of marketing, and it's sustainable. You pay for it one time, it's sustainable. So you should do one out and sound. Rosa Valley. You should have a video out in the in the channel. You, you, wherever it is that you're really focusing on, that video should be a part of what you show people, what you send people to introduce yourself. It's connected in your Facebook page. It's connected in your business page. It's connected. You know, it's about connecting your marketing dots. And then, if you try to do the whole elephant today, you leave here and do nothing. Do you agree? Yeah. You can't eat the elephant today. It's just you, we're just not hungry enough. You gotta just take little bits of this thing at a time. So if you start with one channel and you get good at that <coughs> one channel, and then you add a video and you do a good video, and then you add another channel and you go go forth and you keep going. Using the Keller Williams E Edge program, these guys are both using and they're super skilled. Would you agree? Yeah. 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 These guys are super, super smart guys. So we're so blessed to have you guys here today to tell us about this. But if you were just using your eEdge, you could create a single landing page for each of these geographic areas, and you can add them onto your eEdge page. It works exactly the same. They are, you know, you will be able to get results from that. So if you're specializing in, you name the thing, you know, multi-residential, specific, pro whatever it is, you can add page after page after page about that and land people there based on whatever your marketing is after. Yeah. Question. Um, it used to be real critical that you capture certain domain names. You know, like I specialize in Channel Islands Harbor, so Seabridge or Westport or Key Names, and I have paid for those for years. Is that critical anymore? Or is that it, it's still going to come up in your search results. So, okay. if, like for instance, I included real estate in mine um, just because it, you know it was harder to find one, but sure. those come up. But definitely the words that you use. So um, I, we didn't go on my blog, but I, I mean I. I don't have a great blog. I'm not. I wouldn't consider myself like a blogger, but I'm gonna make sure to use keywords. I'm gonna make sure to be redundant too. Like in my description of myself, you know, Jason Walter sells houses in Oxnard, Ventura, Camarillo. I mean, I name all the cities, Ventura County. If you see my posts, I'm always using keywords because people aren't searching for Jason Walters. You know, they're searching for realtor in Oxnard, homes for sale in Oxnard. You know, sell my house, stuff like that. So you want to use those words. But anything over five keywords per page is going to kick you out. Yeah. So Google is going to don't say open that's spam, yeah. and they're going to kick you yeah, out. Yeah. Don't just go. Yeah. Uh, you can't I'm not Real estate, real estate, real estate, real estate. In the very beginning, when this machine was starting, you could say real estate, real estate, real estate, and come up. But Google reads just like a human does. So if you say the same thing over again, over again, it's boring. Right? Yeah. So Google is looking to us to be great marketers, great advertisers of business. And for that, we have to be really careful that we're not making mistakes. We would put a bunch of different URLs in, yes. and we'd point all of these URLs in, and then Google said, no more. Hmm. Don't yeah. do that. I mean, you don't want to sound weird either. Yeah. Yeah. They want it to be yeah. organic. <laughs> and it's, more, it's more your fresh and updated content more than anything with those keywords, not overusing keywords. but. Hmm. Um, with your fresh content versus just your domain name. A domain name, domain name, if you're, I mean, if you're not doing anything with it, and it seems Google saying that it's not being, you know, you have to update. Stuff, it's not going to do it. You have to update and, and create one. pages and, you know, all of the above. I mean, it, it's really. Uh, I was talking to someone the other day about it, and if this is something that you want to pursue, like, okay, well, I'm going to get business in real estate, um, in uh, social media, or real estate with social media. I mean, you have to dedicate, you know, your time to it. I mean, you don't say, well, I'm going to door knock. You go door knock like one day, and then you're like, well, how come nobody let me list their house, you know? <laughs> you have to do it like you would do anything else, and it's a lot of effort. So be prepared, and, you know, you get in what you, you – you get out what you put in, you know? Question. How much time each day would you say, in general, you spend maintaining – you know, a lot of people think, like, oh, my God, you must be always on there. 
But, you know, I, I post. I, I freaking, I'm going to post this. I go on, I post it, and, you know, sometimes I don't even respond. You know, I, I don't respond even to, even to the next day. I don't, uh, so I'm not, like, constantly on it. I'm, I get a lot of my business because of my posts. Um, and like, like, for instance, I, I'm sure you guys have seen me up there with the soul sign. You know, it, it takes me about an hour to do that. And I only post during certain times. So something like that, I'm like, oh my god, I gotta get, I schedule an appointment. I gotta get to the office by two o'clock if I'm gonna post it by three today. And that's another thing is, you know, you don't post a, you wanna post high traffic times. You, know? you don't wanna, you know, cold call when people are at home. You don't wanna door knock when people are at home. You don't wanna post when, you know, the majority of people are online and statistically speaking, people are on like at noon time. You know, think about it. In the normal eight to five, they get out at lunch. What's the first thing they're doing? They're checking their Facebook. So I do that a lot too. Like, what would I get out of work, it's 5 o'clock, you know, by the time I get home, they're driving, I don't want to, you know, see my pulse while they're in the car, <laughs> so, you know, if I, if I can't post until a certain time, I won't. Well, Facebook business page, too, you can also schedule You can schedule, posts. you can schedule, schedule my posts. posts, but I don't like scheduling posts because they, when they go out, they don't, IFTTT doesn't pick it up and it doesn't go out to my feed, so I tried to schedule a lot of posts before, and I'm not getting uh, the piggyback yeah. syndrome that I like. Robin? Just pick pick your best one and 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 go with that. Right. If you're yeah. if you're marketing all these domain names, I have vchomesonline.com. That's what I had for a long time. But when I got my new Zillow site, it's jasonwaltersrealestate.com. My VC Homes Online still forwards there, but I'm not promoting it. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's. I mean, that's important, but um, just to let you guys know, I, I wasn't going to say anything. But you guys aren't going to take my name. So uh, October 23rd, the dot .realtor domain name comes out. So you'll be able to get, you know, Robin Turner dot .realtor. Right, tell us about the importance of that. Because well, well, I mean, like, I can't get Jason Walters. So I prefer JasonWalters.com. But I can't get it because someone else has it. This guy that was starting a band, oh, <laughs> and oh. its site is un under construction. I have been contacting him for years. Um, you have to pay a lot of money to like be like reserve it. So as soon as he if he, he keeps paying it, you know, especially if he got a deal and paid for like ten years or something, I'm not going to get it. So Jason, I'm it's the day Jason, I'm going to be at midnight, twelve oh one. I'm like, okay, Jason, watch the drill. Well, it's my, it's, it's me, you know. But what if your name is, see, this is what my problem has always been. Our name is constantly mis misspelled. Or if you have a long So you wouldn't do it. Yeah, then you, know? you don't do it. You don't do it. It would be like, you know. You want something easy to remember. Same thing is true on Twitter. Then it sells home. You reserve your name on Twitter because you only get one chance at it. So, like, Whoopi Goldberg didn't have hers, and the person that posts for her on Twitter every day isn't Whoopi. That's right. And so it's very important that you reserve your name on Twitter, even if you're currently not using Twitter. Sam made an excellent point here. The young people who are going to be our future buyers and sellers are using Twitter and Instagram as a combination, and Facebook is for old girls like me, <laughs> as far as they're concerned. So, yeah, you've got to really, you've got to really learn your channels and get with it. Susie. So if you have a last name like mine, um, <laughs> would you still reserve it? On I only stuff that I mean, you you want to be like, imagine you're driving down the street and you see someone that you know, and like. Hey, go to JasonWaltersRealEstate.com. You know, you don't. Like, oh, okay. They're gonna be able to type it in. You know, if you say, you know, some complicated name, where I you have to. I still want my name. I would. Uh, the answer yeah. to me is yes. You oh, want your I name agree. because they're gonna see that you join Twitter. Okay. It's gonna hit your Facebook friends. It's oh, going well, to hit Twitter. Yeah. yeah, I mean, definitely. I I have. I mean, I would still get your name, um, but you know, have it. To forward, like on a web domain name, okay. forward it to the one that you can give people, or have your name and have one that you can give people that forwards to your website. Something simple, but you you always want to reserve your name on everything, okay? And if whether or not you promote it, you know, because like I said, people aren't going to search for you know Jason Walters, you know, and they don't know me until they search for houses, and then they start. Oh my God, he's here! Oh, oh, he's here! I have people tell me, "God, oh, you're everywhere!" I'm like, "Oh." It's... You don't want the agent you're competing with to buy it too, and yeah. create their own yeah, website. No, that's a problem. In your yeah. regard, yeah. <laughs> but the other problem is too is um, 
when you have a name that can be easily misspelled, like the other spelling of my name is Cornstar. But that's fine for talk. Two very, two very different audiences there. Yeah, yeah, that 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 might be a selling point. I'm listing my house with her. Yeah. Right, right. Oh, it's okay, question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, another solution to that is you could also um, <coughs> use the name of a, a geographic farm that you're using. For example, I have River Park 411. And I, I do things a little differently than, than Jason does. And then I, I take a micro area and basically make it. Um, this term is organic, it's building up from the community to get a little more traditional approach that I did the other way around. Right? Oh, hey, I would love to do it too. Uh, and, uh, and I, 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 I just can't pick a zone. Yeah. And since then, you know, it's, it's picked up from there where the collection actually yeah. has backlinks to. Well, yeah, because they're searching for River Park, yeah. the collection, famous days, stuff like that. They're not. Oh, I want Phil. You know, they're looking for. I want River Park, and since he types River Park and this and that, and he farms to River Park, he's gonna organically come up high if you're typing River Park. Now, if you're farming, if you want to sell houses there, and Phil's number one in River Park, you know, you're gonna have some competition because everyone that types in River Park is gonna find Phil. <laughs> My friends, we've come to the. He, time he has one more. Hands. Oh, yeah. So with all the different networks, like Zillow and Yelp and Realtor.com, with regards to getting reviews, how do you get reviews? How do you ask your customers on when you to ask for well, it, It's well, do you one at a time or simultaneously. Well, it depends. If you find me on because of reviews, oh, we have some great reviews. Oh, great! And then I'm going to take extra special care of you so that you leave me a good one too. Okay, or before I'm oh thanks you did a great job and I you know I'm I'm a joking personality I'm like cool cool that means that you can leave me a really good review then you know and then I follow up I send them an email hey thanks so much it's review time you know it's time <laughs> it's time to go right before and, they get the keys and uh, <laughs> you know, I, I make it real easy I'm including my links all they have to do is click it you do all three of them or all or all five of them I had one them? recently she, you know I said hey just copy and paste here's all my links. She went and wrote me a review on every single site that I have. And it's important, like, Jason's are coming up from organic uh, reviews. You know, he's they're wanting to write him reviews. Now, one thing with Google, and they've made that very clear, especially with Google+, Plus, saying hey to all your friends right now and saying, hey, go start writing me reviews. It's going to show up, and Google's going to go, whoa, 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 whoa. You've had, like, one, maybe two here and there, and then all of a sudden in a week you've had, like, 20. They're gonna see that, and it, it puts marks against your your ranking yeah. there. You have to like really yeah. be getting That's reviews like, yeah. from your clients it's like, it's as you business. sell houses. Yeah. It's regular business. <laughs> it's right. Business online is the same as business mm -hmm. in person. You've got to treat it like a business. What do you do? And it's slow, steady, and consistent. Uh, you guys were both <laughs> excellent. Oh, we yeah. appreciate it. Good job, buddy. Uh, First off, a lot of you, we were talking about eEdge. Um, in October, October 10th, we're going to do a boot camp for those of you that don't have your contacts yet into eEdge. Um, so start accumulating your information. Uh, an Excel or CSV file is going to be the best way. But I mean, if you have to bring your phone, whatever, we're going to do like a two-hour boot, boot camp starting that day at 10 o'clock to get you guys to get contact into your eEdge database. Um, we've also just um, done our texting alert service, so everybody, if you want to get your phones out, you guys can opt into our text messaging service by uh, texting the word KWWVC to 292929. There's a poster on the back wall box there as well, and that'll opt you in for alerts. Um, for team meetings, classes, any kind of things that we have going on there. So and we're not going to over No. Yeah, we're not going to over it. We're Same just going to really relevant things. KWWVC to 292929. It's right outside the door, and for the um, boot camp day, we'll go I in and make, make it work. But, uh, okay. Uh, like, Thank you all. Uh, so no, much for coming. No. All right. I know. I know. <laughs> no. Yeah, but no, I don't know. <laughs>